Hi, it's Rob Levy here. Thank you so much for watching my videos. A lot of people have been reaching out to me making comments either emailing me or contacting me through YouTube or past clients as a longtime realtor for 33 years saying, hey Rob, is there going to be a housing bubble? Should I be concerned about a housing bubble? So I threw together a whole bunch of slides here and I want to share these with you from all sorts of different experts all over the country talking about the real estate market. So let's dive into this. So first off, I want to acknowledge that yes, everybody's worried about this. Now if we look at this chart right up here, you can see 44% of real estate agents are concerned about it but a whopping 77% of you consumers are also worried about it. That's a big deal. So should you be worrying? Well, I want to kind of set the table with what's going on historically and where we are now with a whole bunch of slides. So bear with me. This is going to be a few minutes long. So first off, let's talk about price appreciation. Price appreciation is continuing to accelerate per this graph. And you can see right here that through January 2022, it's still appreciating about 19 0.1% year-over-year price increases per month. So that is because of lack of inventory. Lack of inventory is delivered by a lot of different reasons. Number one, people not putting their houses on the market, but probably the most important is we're still suffering from way back during the recession where a lot of development wasn't done. We lost a lot of developers and we also lost a lot of builders. So therefore there's not enough new construction coming on to fill in the gaps. Throw in the fact that permits and everything else make new construction extremely expensive then that means also there's not a lot of entry-level new construction in particular. So let's see what the experts are saying. On this next slide right here, we talk about home price forecast for 2022. Now I'm coming to you in the middle of March in 2022, and these are put together from seven different forecasts, from CoreLogic, Fannie Mae, uh, Freddie Mac, National Association of Realtors, Mortgage Bankers Association, Zellman, and others. The average of all of those is 6.1%. If houses go up 6.1% in 2022, that's a little above normal. I think the historical average since World War II is like 4.7, but it's a lot below some of these crazy prices that we've seen in recent years. Now, as I speak to you, there's a war going on between Russia and the Ukraine, and that definitely is affecting things, and we'll talk about how it affects things in a minute. But those are the official forecasts for 2022. So let's set the table a little bit here. What's the impact of inventory on home prices? Well, this slide right here, you can see, and I've maintained this all along, is that a seller's market is less than six months. That means the sellers are in command. There's not really enough inventory at less than six months um, to, to buyers to you know, be able to sit around and make offers on houses and stuff like that. A neutral market is six to seven months, some say five to seven months, and a buyer's market is greater of seven months in inventory. Now I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon in the middle of March in 2022, and we're still at about three weeks worth of inventory. And the majority of the country is kind of the same way too. So obviously right now we're still in a seller's market. So let's talk about this next slide then, which is new listings. And this one talks about the new listings falling dramatically. The new monthly listing counts in thousands for the United States of America going back from January through December of 2022. And you can see that we have a severe lack of inventory. Now the same thing is continuing in 2022 as far as houses that come on the market in the first two and a half months because that's kind of where we are right now. Um, and so we, right now we're still in very much of a seller's market. So should we be concerned about this whole market crash? Well, let's, let's kind of take a look at this side because this is where it gets into the meat of the matter. The inventory of homes is nothing like last time. And you can see on this chart that the four years of the housing crash, 2007, 8, 9, and 10, we had many months worth of supply, 9.6, 9.4, 7.3, 8.5. When we compare it to the current last four years, 3.7, three months, 1.9, 1.8, these are national statistics. There simply aren't that many homes on the market, as I've continued to say throughout this video and a lot of my videos recently. So what does that really mean? Well, there's several things going on here. So first off, interest rates. Interest rates right now are running around about a little under 4%. Interestingly, the impact of the war with Russia has kind of brought rates down a little bit. And interest rates are forecasted to go anywhere between, let's say, 3.5% and 4.5%, which is still extremely low. Add to the fact that people's houses have gone up so much in value since the end of the recession that there's a massive amount of equity in homes. We don't see really a housing crash because it's not going to be a foreclosure crisis and there's not going to be a foreclosure crisis because people have too much equity in their house. In other words, if somebody has a house that's worth 500000 and they owe 250000 and all of a sudden it drops to 450000 instead of 500000 they're not going to walk away from their mortgage because they still have a couple of hundred thousand dollars in equity.
So for those reasons, I think it's important to note that we're probably not going to see a housing crash, according to all of the experts, at least in 22 or 2023, the way things are looking. And the other thing to consider right now is that the interest rates are still historically low. I talk about this all the time in my videos. We've got a little slide I can pop up here. And if you look at interest rates per decade, we're way lower than it's been in many, 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 many years. So therefore, Buying a house now does seem to make sense, even though the prices are higher because the interest rates are lower. Because in the United States of America, we do something rather unique. And you can't do this in Canada. You can't do this in Western Europe or in the UK. And that is that you lock in on a 30-year mortgage. And by 30-year mortgage, I mean you know what your payment's going to be for the next 30 years. In Canada, the UK, most of Western Europe, it's very different. You lock into a 30-year mortgage, you get a 30-year rate, but it's renewable every five years. So that means you need to qualify at a rate of, let's say, 7% or something in five years, should that happen. And that's what causes a lot of these problems. So anyhow, what is the state of the economy and regarding housing? Where do things stand? Again, to summarize, we have a severe lack of inventory. We have millennials buying houses like never before. We have baby boomers such as myself downsizing. I, my wife and I just did recently. And there's not enough homes being built. So for that reason and, that that, and throw in the equity, we simply don't see the crash coming the way that people are predicting it. I hope that answers some of your questions. Again, put in comments below if you've got any questions. Also, please feel free to forward this to a friend and click on subscribe if you'd like to get my videos and I really appreciate you watching them.